In this video, we're going to go over a couple of tips to make buck models in Fusion 360 for sheet metal parts. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I'm going to answer a question that came in about designing and creating a buck or a wood form that you can design your sheet metal parts over. So if you're new to sheet metal, then I'm, I'm saying sheet metal, but it's not the sheet metal tools in Fusion 360. We're not talking about simple bends. We're talking about actually forming parts. So if you've used, uh, you know, an English wheel or planishing hammers or leather bags or hammer dollies, those kinds of things, that's what we're talking about here. So we're talking about forming and designing car body parts, basically sheet metal parts. And one of the ways that we can do that, one of the methods is to build bucks or wooden forms that we can hammer over. And in Fusion 360, it's, you know, we can design these parts digitally, but getting this off the screen and onto an actual vehicle is another trick. It's a whole nother level of design. Now this fender was something that I helped a subscriber with and he's actually designing a large or building a large format 3D printer to print the fenders. Now, most people aren't gonna do that. You're not gonna have a giant 3D printer and you're not gonna print something like this in a bunch of sections. So instead what we do is we build and design a grid of either 3D prints or wooden pieces or metal pieces. And we use that to either fill with foam and sand so we can create a fiberglass part or we actually use it as a hammer form, something that we can hammer the sheet metal over. So we're gonna talk about a couple different ways that we can do that. We're not gonna do the entire fender, I'm just gonna focus on a small section, but it should give us the tips and techniques that we need in order to do this on your parts. So as always, whenever I'm going over something and I can share the model, I do. So if you go to the description, you can download this fender and you can play around with it yourself. So we're gonna do a couple of things that don't work and then we're gonna talk about some other shortcuts or tips that we might need to get them to work. Now, it's always important to be an efficient designer to understand the tools that you have access to and also understand different ways that you can perform the same task. Because in all my years of doing this, there are always times where you have to do, a, you have to go a different direction. Things just don't seem to work. So we're going to get started with one I know won't work on this model, and then we're going to progress to some other options. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle. Now this rectangle generally would be the width of your wooden board. If you're, uh, you know, if you're creating this out of wood or sheet metal, then you would typically make this the thickness of your part. I'm not gonna go through the process of adding dimensions because it's just gonna waste time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extrude this. And keep in mind, Fusion does have a thin extrude, so it could have just been a single line. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude this out in two directions so that it is wider than the entire fender. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, we've got this option that's two object. Well, that is not gonna work in this case because our profile is already outside of the bounds of that object and the object underneath the fender rolls back and over here rolls down. So that's not an option that's gonna work in this case. If you're designing a part where it's not like that, it might be fine. But one of the things that we can do sometimes is we can use split body. We can split this body and we can use the surface of the fender to split it up. Now, this case I know is not gonna work. I tried this already, I knew it wasn't gonna work. So I just wanted to at least show you that that is an option, but it is very geometry dependent. And you might be thinking, well, you didn't click that extend surface or extend splitting tool option. But it's not gonna work here. And mainly it's not gonna work because you can see that it extends here and it extends down. And for, a sh for actually a surface part that would work, but for this solid part, for some reason, it just doesn't work. So let's go ahead and let's delete that. Uh, we're not gonna use it, we don't need it. Now let's talk about some ways in which we can make this work. So the next tip or technique that I would go to if the solid doesn't work is for me to create a sketch again, and this time I'm gonna use surfaces. Now I'm gonna do this with just lines. I'm gonna add a couple vertical lines. Generally what you would do is these would be consistently spaced. So you would probably make one and then you would use something like a rectangular pattern. 
Uh, I'm also going to add some horizontals in here. This is going to be extremely important if you are building something like this that you have cross braces to hold everything together and consistently spaced. So now that I have those, I'm going to extrude them just like I did with the solid, but this time we're just going to have these, uh, these extra pieces here. And because they're surfaces, they're not going to connect to each other. They're not going to automatically stitch together. So we can just go ahead and extrude them all at the same time. That's not true with this closed profile solids. They would join together and, and it, would, it would be a mess. But that's going to give us at least a starting point here. So the next thing that we can do is we can try to trim. Now for trim, the trim tool is going to be our fender. And then we want to get rid of the areas on the outside. Now this is an, an instant thing that we can tell if it's going to work or not. So as we hover over the area we want to remove, if we're not seeing the profile of the fender, so like for example here with these horizontal ones, we can see that it's actually stopping at the fender. So this piece here is stopping at the fender. Those are working fine, but these vertical ones are not working. And I found at least on a part like this, it's very dependent on the geometry. Like this would work over here just fine, but on this surface for some reason it won't. Now when you're trimming, sometimes you can just select an individual surface. So we can select a face on here instead of the entire thing. And sometimes that'll work, but again, you're relying on fusion to extend the tangency of those surfaces out and it's, you're kind of rolling the dice. It's going to be a little bit of a gamble. So if this doesn't work, if you get to this point and you're just scratching your head and you, you can't make it work, there's two other things that we can do to sort of progress through this. Now, one of them is to create a split. Now, we can do a split line or a split body. Generally, a split line would probably be best. And then we can, uh, we can split that up. So let's try to do a split face. So the face is to split. We're going to try this. The tool is going to be our fender. And we're going to allow it to extend out. We're going to say, OK, it doesn't work. If we reverse that, if we are going to split the fender up, for example, and the splitting tool is this, then we don't need to extend anything out. So I can just take this and I can hide it. And you can see that we made that split line there. And you might be thinking to yourself, what, what good is that? What do we really want to do? Well, if you're building this out manually and you have to do a lot of extra work, then you can extend these surfaces out and you can build out these little sections. It's a lot of work. It's not something I would suggest. It's like a last, last ditch effort there. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to bring back this, uh, this piece here. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and hide these other ones. We don't, really don't need them for this example. The last, the last sort of method that I would use to try to get this to work is I'm just going to sketch on this face. And then I'm going to go to Create, Project, Include, and Intersect. And I want to intersect with this body. I'm going to just select the entire body. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to hide the fender. So what I'm left with here is essentially, now I got a couple other horizontal pieces, we can hide those, but essentially what I'm left with is the shape of our fender. Now what we can do from here is we can figure out where we want the rest of this to go. So this can come down and that can go back. And then we can use that sketch as a trim tool. So I'm gonna use this as our trim tool. I'm gonna to make sure that I hold down control or command if you're on a Mac, select all of that. Then I want to remove the outside piece and voila, now we should have this profile. So if I hide the sketch, we don't have it. So again, it's just kind of this weird situation where sometimes these things don't tend to work. Now, if we try that trim again and we don't select those extra pieces and we select that outside region, you see that it's not working. Uh, again, if we select these extra pieces, it should let us remove that. Uh, and you can see that it's just not working. But don't worry, that doesn't mean that this is the end of the line because all you really need for this to work is a closed profile. Now, in order to get that closed profile, I'm just gonna finish this off. And then I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna select these outside edges and I am gonna make these into construction lines. So what that leaves me with, if I hide this uh, that surface, is it leaves me with this little profile here. Now, if we're doing this out of sheet metal, then we can extrude that. If we're making it out of 
um, you know, thin wood, then we can extrude that as well. Now, of course, it's not going to be exact. The curvature on the outside of this is not going to be exact to the fender because obviously we're dealing with a flat piece, but that's going to be true no matter what you do. So um, you kind of have to, you know, take that and, and think about sanding it, maybe making it a little bit smaller, offsetting the curve a little bit to get that to work. Uh, but essentially what we now have is we've got this, this solid piece. Now, the reason that I would go the extra step to make this a solid piece is because we need to figure out how all these little pieces are going to fit together. So you're going to have to make some sort of intersection between them, some little cutouts, so that way they can fit together like a puzzle. The last, 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 last step of this is how do we manufacture this? Well, the easy thing is, is we can take that sketch and we can save it as a DXF. So if we're going to save it as a DXF, then we need to, you know, name what these sketches are going to be. Fender 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, like Fender horizontal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, vertical 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then build out all the files that we need to manufacture this. So again, if you're actually printing it, then you would put it into a detailed drawing. You would print it to scale. Uh, if you're going to send it out to be laser cut or water jet, uh, you know, if you're going to build this out of thin sheet metal and weld it together, then you would send all those DXFs out, have them cut, and then you could build it that way. And generally what I would say is you would build the symmetric version of this right on it. Oftentimes you would do that or build it in a way that you can assemble it in both directions, right? So the curvature is the same, but it's mirrored. So this piece, if we flipped it 180 degrees, it would be the right fender, right? So, uh, or the front passenger side fender here in the US anyways. Uh, so, you know, you can design these pieces because they are symmetric in a way that you can put them together in both orientations. It does take a lot of work, but that's the general process that you have to go through. Now, ideally, it would be great if it would just work properly and we could just go in and you know extrude it and then just split the body i found that with complex models something that you're probably going to need to do this with it doesn't work like that so i almost always am going to go the direction of using a surface trying to do trim because trim in most cases i found works fine when trim doesn't, then you need to go in and create a sketch and use that intersection. And that'll give you all of the information you need. Now, I don't want to spend, you know, an hour going through the process to build out this cage. Hopefully that's enough information to help you progress and do that on your own. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have another method that you've used that works, I'd love to know that too. Uh, there's always unique ways that you can get this kind of stuff done. There are add-ins and tools that I've seen on the market that will help do some of this. It is tricky because we are talking about relatively complex shapes. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that the more complex a shape is, the harder that is. Also keep in mind that we do have some modify tools. A range allows us to take all of these objects and put them on a flat plane. That can be very handy, especially if you have access to, let's say, a four foot or an eight foot water jet, and you know that you're going to lay them all out on a specific sheet, then you can take all of these pieces, lay them out on one sheet. And I would suggest that you use some sketch text and put numbers or identifiers on them. So um, for example, this would, would be V1, V2, V3, V4 for vertical, and then horizontal one, two, three, four, in some way that they would all fit together. All right, so that's going to be it. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.